Hey there, Will's Recap here. Today, I'm thrilled to dive into one of the best Indian movies, a tale deeply rooted in reality. The narrative follows two friends on a quest to find their long-lost companion. Together they journey back to their college days, reliving the memories of a friend who ignited a spark of unconventional thinking. In a world quick to label them idiots, their friend inspired them to see life differently. Let's explore the heartwarming and thought-provoking story that unfolds. Stay tuned! Farhan, a 30-year-old man, is about to take off on a flight. While on the plane, he receives a shocking call that deeply surprises him. In response, just as the airplane is taking off, he stands up to reach the stewardess. However, a sudden chest pain forces him to collapse, and the pilots make an emergency landing. Farhan is wheeled out in a wheelchair, seemingly unconscious. Out of the blue, he opens his eyes, revealing that he faked the heart attack. Doing a few jumping jacks, he assures his caretaker he's okay, then swiftly runs away. He hurries to his friend Raju's home, calling Raju to share the news that their third friend, Rancho, is back in town. The news shocks Raju as much as it shocks Farhan. He hastily puts on a shirt and rushes outside with his shoes in his hands. When the friends finally meet, Farhan playfully points out that Raju forgot to wear his pants. However, both friends seem not to care much, as the missing pants are insignificant compared to the joy of reuniting with their long-lost friend, Rancho. They visit their former engineering college, encountering Chatur, their college rival, an egocentric and gullible man. As the story unfolds, it is revealed that Chatur had made a bet with Farhan and his group during their college days. They had agreed to meet again 10 years later on the 5th of September to determine who among them had achieved the most success. While everyone else had forgotten about the seemingly foolish bet, Chatur remembered it and gathered them all in the same place. He proudly discloses that he is the vice president of Rockledge Corporation and a millionaire. However, Farhan and Raju are indifferent to his success and are solely focused on meeting Rancho. Chatur reveals that Rancho left abruptly after college and has never been in touch since. Despite multiple attempts to find him, they eventually gave up. As they are on the verge of confronting Chatur for wasting their time, he asserts that Rancho is in Shimla. Chatur expresses his desire to take them on a trip to Shimla, aiming to reunite them and showcase his achievements. Farhan and Raju agree to join him, indifferent to his attempts to prove their inferiority. A flashback reveals when Farhan started college, he, Raju and Rancho shared a room. Farhan struggled with his father's expectations for him to become an engineer, while Raju was preoccupied with fear of the future. In contrast, Rancho, from their first meeting, showed resilience when confronted by seniors on their first college night. Almost all senior students of all colleges in India have a tradition called ragging of various forms. Here, they used to get the freshers naked and make them bow to show respect to their seniors. It was probably also a way for their elders to exhibit their closeted homosexuality without consequence. When everyone else quietly followed the tradition, Rancho did not. Instead, he locked himself inside his dorm room and refused to come out, even when the leader of the bullies threatened to teach him a lesson. The bully is about to urinate in front of Rancho's door, but Rancho, being clever, connects an electric wire to a spoon and slides it under the door. When the bully urinates on it, he gets an electric shock. The onlookers laugh and appreciate Rancho's ingenious move. Farhan and Raju are both impressed and puzzled by Rancho's unique personality. Following this incident, we meet the college's stern dean, Viru, also known as Virus among the students. He is a conventional man who believes that life is a race and that students should strictly follow instructions to achieve success. Virus despises wasting time evident in his unique choice of clothing with Velcro instead of buttons and hooks on his ties. Every year, Virus addresses the first-year students, sharing a story about a special pen he received from his teacher. According to him, it is an astronaut's pen developed through extensive research to write in space. He has long awaited the opportunity to bestow the pen upon an exceptional student, considering himself extraordinary. Throughout his 20-year career, Virus has never encountered a student worthy of this pen. He repeats the same speech to each new batch of students, and remarkably, no one has ever questioned him. 
However, when Rancho asks why astronauts didn't use a pencil instead of a pen, Virus is left stunned. All he can manage is a promise to address the question later. Following the speech, the school's janitor and child worker named Millimeter applaud Rancho for his question. Rancho, in turn, gives him some money to buy a school uniform, advising him to enter any class of any school without being noticed. Farhan finds his intriguing personality amusing, but Raju is concerned that Rancho might cause them trouble. Rancho stands out from most students who act as puppets to the professors. Rancho stands out by asking his own questions, providing his own answers, and genuinely loving engineering. However, teachers often mistake his attentiveness for mischief, leading to him being sent out of class. Undeterred, Rancho simply joins another random class. His purpose in college is not merely for a diploma, but for genuine learning, a valuable life lesson for us all. In the entire college, there's only one other student like him, Roy from the fourth year. Roy has been working on a genius project, but Virus refuses to acknowledge it due to the submission deadline. Virus even calls Roy's father, informing him bluntly that his son won't graduate. The devastating news is too much for Roy's hopeful father to handle, but Virus remains unmoved. He is adamant about not giving Roy a second chance. In despair, Roy throws his project away. Rancho later finds it and realizes that the machine is innovative and only needs a bit of polishing. Over the next week, he works on the project and completes it. When it's done, they fly the drone to Roy's room, only to find his lifeless body. They rush to his room, witnessing the unthinkable act he has committed. During Roy's funeral, Rancho tells Virus that Roy was murdered by the college's system of pressuring students. The Virus takes the comment personally and writes a letter to Farhan and Raju's parents, accusing Rancho of being a bad influence on their sons. The very next day, Farhan's father calls them home and asks Rancho to stay away from his son. Rancho ignores his words, distracted by the wildlife pictures on the wall. It turns out that Farhan wants to be a wildlife photographer but has taken engineering because of his father. Rancho tries to convince his father otherwise, but it is not enough to eradicate his deep-rooted and shallow principles. After that, they go to Raju's home and find out that his family lives below poverty. His father is bedridden and retired, while his sister is getting older, but no one wants to marry her. The family's burdens rest on Raju's shoulders, making him perpetually anxious about the future. Subsequently, the friends assume the roles of wedding guests to relish the food. Rancho observes a young woman named Pia and her prospective husband discussing her timepiece. The dialogue suggests that Suhas, the fiancé, is a superficial individual, motivated solely by her social standing. Rancho shares his opinion about Suhas with Pia and discreetly places a dress into his shoes to expose his materialistic nature. As anticipated, Suhas reacts vehemently, revealing the exorbitant price of his shoes and berating the waiter for the damage. Captivated by Rancho's character, Pia investigates and discovers that he is a student of her father, Virus. Unfortunately for the guy, the wedding they infiltrated happens to be Virus's elder daughters. Pia informs her father about the three friends, landing them in hot water. On the night before exams, Chatur slyly places adult magazines in everyone's dorm room to create a distraction. When Rancho catches wind of this, he is set on teaching him a lesson. One day, Chatur is invited to deliver a Hindi speech at a crucial charity event. However, being terrible at Hindi, he memorizes the speech without understanding a single word. Unbeknownst to him, Rancho has swapped some crucial words in the text with terms like breast and assault. On the day of the event, Chatur unknowingly insults the VIPs with his absurd speech. After facing consequences for his actions, Chatur is furious. He challenges the guys to a bet on who will be the most successful in 10 years, marking the date September 5th on the wall. One day, Rancho encounters Pia and Suhas outside a jewelry store. Suhas has just purchased an expensive watch for her. Rancho experiments, having Pia pretend she lost the watch. Suhas loses his temper and calls her an idiot, once again revealing his materialistic nature. Pia breaks up with Suhas after returning the watch. Soon after, Rancho receives a call about Raju's father having a seizure. He and Pia rush to Raju's house, ensuring his father reaches the hospital just in time to save his life. Raju expresses immense gratitude and apologies to his friend. Witnessing Rancho's deep concern for his friends, 
Pia starts developing feelings for him. When the results of the first semester exams are released, Farhan and Raju find themselves in the lowest ranks, but they are relieved not to have failed. Surprisingly, Rancho secures the first position, leaving them astonished. Chatur, who secures the second position, and Virus, who despises Rancho, are the most disheartened individuals in the crowd. Virus takes a photo with the top two students of the passing class by his side. Returning to the present, Raju and Farhan, accompanied by Chatur, reach Simla to meet Rancho. They reach his house based on Chatur's location information and discover that Rancho's father passed away earlier that morning. In the midst of mourning, they approach a man. Yet, to their bewilderment, the man who asserts to be Rancho turns out to be someone else. Even the photo they took together in college is different. The guys retreat to a nearby restaurant to contemplate their next move. During their discussion, Chatur brings up a renowned scientist and inventor named Wang Do, who is set to finalize a million-dollar deal with his company the following week. The remaining two friends, Farhan and Raju, express indifference toward the supposed great scientist and are more interested in unraveling the mystery behind the stolen identity of Rancho. They go back to the house and confront the imposter Rancho, demanding information about the real one. The man takes out a gun in an attempt to intimidate them. While it scares Chatur who runs away, Farhan and Raju stand firm. In response, they threaten to throw his father's ashes into the toilet unless he confesses the truth. The man eventually reveals that he is the real Rancho, and the person who attended college with them is actually the son of his family's gardener, known as Chote since childhood. Chote used to complete Rancho's homework and study on his behalf. When Rancho's father discovered Chote's assistance, he permitted him to continue since Kote required education and Rancho needed a degree. However, Chote had to fulfill his promise and returned after graduating, severing contact. Once Raju and Farhan learn about his new address, they set out to find him again. In their final year of college, the guys were anxious about the upcoming job recruitment scheduled in two months. During a speech about recruitment, Virus insults Farhan and Raju, asserting that they will never secure jobs. He labels them as losers and ridicules them publicly. That night, fueled by anger, the three get drunk. In their inebriated state, Rancho discloses that Farhan has a letter in his bag addressed to his favorite photographer, indicating his aspiration to work with them. He also criticizes Raju for being a constant worrier about the future, branding him a coward. Raju and Farhan, in return, agree to follow Rancho's instructions if he expresses his feelings to Pia. They break into Virus's house and enter Pia's room. Rancho, thinking Pia is asleep, confesses his feelings, only to discover that he has been talking to her pregnant sister, Mona. Both girls are impressed by his proposal. Later, Virus wakes up to find urine on his front door and notices Raju's face in the dark. The guys, still intoxicated, fall asleep in class, and wake up a few hours later. As everyone is studying, Virus storms into the classroom and finds Raju still drunk from the previous night. Later, Raju is summoned to Virus's office and informed that he will be expelled permanently. Despite begging the Dean for a second chance, he is ignored. With no hope for a better life, Raju contemplates a drastic decision. Now Rancho and Farhan rush him to the hospital. Thankfully, he survives but goes into a state of paralysis. Pia, who is also a doctor, informs them that Raju can see and hear them, so they should act happy and motivate him to get better quicker. Starting that day, Rancho and Farhan do everything in their power to bring Raju back. They throw celebrations for him, share fictitious updates that could bring joy, and purchase his mother garments she long desired. His expulsion is also annulled, Yet even that positive development fails to revive him. Then, on a particular day, Rancho deceives him by stating that Farhan is set to wed his sister, who is in dire need of a spouse. This information prompts Raju to emerge from paralysis, and with his initial words, he labels them as mischievous and urges them to cease their falsehoods. Subsequently, he recovers swiftly. On the recruitment day, Farhan receives a response from his cherished photographer, inviting him to be his assistant. Now, he only needs to seek his father's approval. Similarly, Raju relinquishes all his good luck charms and attends the interview with boldness. 
He candidly shares his subpar grades and the imminent expulsion, presenting an attitude that the interviewers find unparalleled. Impressed, they extend a job offer to him. In the meantime, following an emotional discussion, Farhan successfully persuades his father to allow him to pursue photography. After the upheaval, Farhan and Raju, as per the college tradition, remove their pants in front of Rancho to show their respect. However, Virus, who is convinced that Raju will fail, is displeased to be proven wrong. Inebriated, he informs his daughters that he will set exceptionally difficult exam questions. Concerned for the guys, Pia provides them with the second key to Virus's office, urging them to pilfer the papers. In the present, the guys contact Pia to inform her that they have located Rancho, but they discover that she is on the verge of getting married within a few hours. Deviating from their original route, they decide to pick her up. Initially hesitant, Pia, who is still in love with Rancho, is seated beside her prospective husband, only to unveil that the man beneath the headwear is Raju. In a desperate attempt to convince her, Raju has assumed the groom's position. Eventually they elope, leaving the guests in astonishment. The night before the final exams, Farhan and Rancho devise a plan to steal the question papers. They are not doing it for themselves, but out of fear that Raju might resort to something foolish if he fails. Despite stealing the paper, when Raju gets hold of it, he adamantly refuses to use it. Virus catches wind of this and storms into their room, discovering the question paper on the floor. See, consequently, he expels all of them. With no other option, the guys reluctantly pack their belongings and leave. Pia discloses that his eldest son, who had supposedly died in an accident, had taken his own life. He took this drastic step because Virus had pressured him into becoming an engineer. After revealing this shocking revelation, Pia angrily storms away. Later, Maya goes into labor, but due to the city being flooded, Virus is unable to take her to the hospital. Rancho, on his way out, notices the situation and prepares to help. Guided by Pia over the phone, he instructs them to lay Maya down on the table tennis board. Despite their efforts, Maya struggles to push harder as she is weak and finds it difficult to breathe. The only option left is to use a device called the vacuum cup to facilitate the baby's delivery. Pia provides them with a demonstration of the vacuum cup device through the computer, inspiring Rancho. He believes he can create a makeshift vacuum cup using materials available around the college. After much effort, he successfully crafts the device and uses it on Mona. Eventually, Mona gives birth to a beautiful baby boy who cries moments after being born. As Rancho prepares to leave, Virus stops him and presents him with the astronaut's pen meant for an extraordinary student. He also answers the initial question Rancho had posed, explaining that a pencil wouldn't be suitable in space due to the risk of its nib floating around. By the end of the night, Virus forgives the students and allows them to take the final exams. In the subsequent scene, the guys graduate, with Rancho once again securing the top position. As the ceremony progresses, he departs in a taxi, marking the last time Farhan and Raju see him. Despite multiple attempts to contact him over the years, they couldn't locate him until now, armed with his exact address. Upon reaching the location, they discover it's a school where Rancho is a teacher. While searching for him, they encounter Millimeter, the janitor who has now grown up. Millimeter informs them that Rancho brought him to the school to ensure he received a proper education. Pia, utilizing her father's scooter, rides to Rancho, who is teaching students by a lake. She confronts him, delivering a slap to his face before sharing a kiss. Farhan and Raju soon join in, expressing their frustration through a physical altercation for his abandonment. However, they come to understand that he has to fulfill his promise to the real Rancho. As the group reunites, Chatur also joins them, mocking Rancho for being a schoolteacher and comparing his million-dollar salary to Rancho's 5,000 rupees. Upon discovering that Rancho has Virus's pen, Chatur seizes it as well. The rest of the group requests Rancho's real name, and to everyone's surprise, he reveals himself to be the great inventor, Mr. Wang Du, whom Chatur hopes to sign a deal with. Wang Du calls Chatur from Rancho's number, and in the final scene, Chatur apologizes to him and follows the college tradition by opening his pants to show respect. 
Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and hit the like button to support the channel. Thanks for watching.